What is up, everyone? I hope you're having a good weekend so far. I just want to say hello to Miss Barton and my fellow creators, Chad's Money Minutes, uh, Matt Clausen. Really good to see you guys here this evening. So we got Michael Briggs. Tamia Jackson says, Hey, Cal, this video is coming right on time. And I think you're talking about uh, the Apple Cards $100 bonus. We're going to talk about that later on. Dark Dude 2000. Welcome back, Mojo. Who else we got? F. Davis. I can't forget you, F. Davis, man. What's up? All right, so let's get into the news. Let's check it out. Reduce that. We'll talk about that in a second. So here's why your credit card perks could be going away. Simply put, the Credit Card Competition Act of 2023 would kill the funding for credit card rewards programs and allow retailers to pocket the savings from lower interchange fees, also known as swipe fees. With lower fees collected, consumers would lose out on rewards, purchase protection, and fraud protection while retailers add to their bottom line. The retail lobbyists are trying to convince consumers that this would lead to lower prices. However, we know that retailers won't pass along those savings because we know the impact of the Durban Amendment, and it was a huge loss for consumers. So they're saying that consumers don't reap the benefits whenever there's a savings that's happening. They just, the retailers will just absorb them. And that makes sense, right? Why would you, as a business owner, why would you wanna give back you know, that that foothold? Why would you want to give back any sort of profit? You just want to add that to pad your your margins. So um, I've seen this in the stats before in a few articles. So I am I tend to believe that that's what would take place. But um, there's no there's no doubt in my mind that if they remove uh, any sort of if they remove any sort of fees, that we're going to take a direct hit to our rewards. We're not going to see as high of those protections. Like we're not going to see uh, cards with these grandiose, uh, you know, travel protections or these huge sign-up bonus. Maybe instead of getting a seven hundred and fifty dollars sign-up bonus for a premium travel card, we might see like a two, three, four hundred dollars sign-up bonus. Instead of getting a five percent flat rate cash or, or a cashback card, we're going to get like a two percent max or three percent maximum in a certain particular uh, category. So, anytime we see a, a hit to fees, they're they're just going to pass that down onto the consumer. And this really reminds me that. Um, People don't understand that the banking industry has uh, is such that it's built in. The fee structure is built and baked into the prices of the goods and services. So anytime you transact with a merchant, a retailer, they already have inflated the prices to compensate for having to pay these swipe fees, these swipe fees or interchange fees. A lot of people don't understand that. So... Next story, new credit card regulations will hurt consumers and small businesses. So proposed government regulations with uh, uh, how credit card payments are processed, impacting how much financial institutions can charge merchants for transactions. All right, the Credit Card Competition Act. Yeah, we just talked about that. So let's go into the next story here. Consumer credit growth slows as lending standards tighten. High interest rates are starting to chill consumer credit growth. Most types of consumer credit card products are showing signs of weakness. Weakness. Growth in outstanding auto loan balances faded to 5.4% in May from 5.6% in April. Growth in credit card balances, meanwhile, moderated from 17.9 to 17.5. That said, the share of borrowers who carry a monthly balance on their credit cards is trending above pre-pandemic levels. Delinquency rates for credit cards and auto loans will increase this year. The delinquency rate for all consumer credit card products increased to 1.49% in May. And so, you know, as the economic uh, climate worsens, we're going to see delinquency rates rise. And, you know, this was a big problem for the subprime uh, credit card offerings like the Apple card. For one, we know they lost a billion dollars. Goldman Sachs, that's why Goldman Sachs is recently in the news about trying to shop around this Apple card partnership they have. And they're wanting to shift that over to uh, Goldman Sachs, to, uh, to Amex. They're trying to get unload this, you know, this albatross around their neck. They're trying to get rid of it because they're 
they lost a billion dollars on that whole partnership. And then we saw uh, companies like Capital One, their uh, delinquency rate has skyrocketed as well. So, you know, when they have that people with lower credit worthiness, we see that those delinquency rates rise at a higher rate. And Bank of America issued credit cards to people without consent. Now, we've seen this actually before. Um, and this is by the CFPB, which is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Now, we've seen this before with Wells Fargo. So this seems to be more like a, I mean, I dare say a common practice with these different banks. And they, they try to see what they can get away with. You know what I mean? So Bank of America employees uh, have been quietly opening new credit card accounts for people without their knowledge, the CFPB said on Tuesday. Since at least 2012, the bank staff wanting to reach their sales incentives used information from consumers' credit reports to submit bogus account applications. Meanwhile, those affected neither knew about these applications nor gave consent for their credit reports to be used. The CFPB ordered the bank to pay a combined $100 million dollars to affected customers and a total fine of $150 million. So I wanna know, has anybody been affected by this Bank of America scandal? Have you noticed that your credit was run and the credit card product was, you know, showed up on your report? Uh, this is exactly why I use, um, you can see one of my sponsors, uh, Aura. I definitely wanna be the first to know uh, that uh, any sort of uh, inquiry happened or any sort of credit card product was open fraudulently and this is a show. It seems like more of an industry kind of practice. It's, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if every major bank has been doing this sort of, you know, has been doing this sort of stuff. I wouldn't be surprised. Next, the coming credit card crunch could crush the economy. That That's really dramatic, right? Could crush the economy. Uh, troubling de developments are happening in the credit markets. The federal funds rate is above 5%, close to where it was in 2007. The last time the economy started to tip into a major recession and financial crisis, we are already starting to hear creaks and groans from within the markets. Capital One, uh, one of the country's largest personal lending companies, has been raising concerns about credit card delinquencies since April. It's not alone. Delinquency rates also rising for Discover and Bread Financial. Uh, and I also, I just quick note about bread. I just remind I actually opened a bread uh, checking and savings account because they have a they have a pretty competitive high yield savings account over at bread. Definitely look into that. I think it's like close to five percent now. It's it's amazing. The rate of increase seems particularly high among those ages eighteen to twenty nine. I mean that's that's expected, right? You know, the younger you are, the less money you have. You know, the more you know our brains aren't fully formed until we're like twenty six years old. So. We're not going to make the best financial decisions and we're not going to really look out uh, for any sort of information to better that part of our lives until we get a little bit older most of the time. Now, we do have some young people in the credit card enthusiast community. I know a lot of I've seen creators, young creators that are starting out with 800 FICO scores. And that's amazing. But that wasn't me. That was definitely not me. So, you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm 35 and I'm now I'm getting to it. So, uh Definitely want to watch out for any sort of debt that you have. You want to get that paid off. Pay those balances. Pay those statement balances in full every single month. Put that on, uh, you know, automatic auto pay. And by the way, I just want to tell you about auto pay. Now, I, I found recently that auto pay did not work for Synchrony. Now, who I mean, you probably could have guessed that Synchrony would be Synchrony Bank would be the issue. Right. I found that my Verizon Visa card and my Amazon store card they their auto pay did not work properly and so that's why you always have to go behind and double check you know fairly frequently i would say at, you know once a month every couple months just to make sure that all those payments were made you definitely want to do some housekeeping because you never know when a, a little shady right a little shady bank like, like synchrony and community will do something like that to you and then then you're gonna get a late fee 30 days 60 day late then it goes into your fico score onto your credit report and those can like drop you by 100 points by themselves you know all right and if you haven't yet go ahead and hit that like button if you have it like what are you doing hit the like button if you like uh, streams like this you want to see more live streams which we do every sunday at 7 p.m go and hit that like button
Watch that number go up. All right, so next we have the CFPB urged to abolish deferred interest. So the CFPB was urged to eliminate deferred interest during a hearing Tuesday that addressed the problems associated with medical credit cards and other payment products. Panelists who spoke during the agency's hearing on medical financing and healthcare debt said deferred interest has saddled patients with exorbitant levels of medical debt. Deferred interest credit cards offer no interest during a, pro during a promotional period, but interest is retroactively applied if the entire balance is not paid in full by the end of that period including on portions of the balance already paid off so i i definitely like how proactive the cfpb is i, I feel like i see again i can't say this enough i see them in the news every single week if not every other week trying to really rein in on any sort of you know mal malpractice or any sort of um uh, you know any sort of misgivings or if, if the credit card issuers and the banks try to do something ill, you know, in, in malice against their customers, they pretty much are there. And and you can even go to the CP web, CFPB website and they have a lot of material there for uh, filing complaints. It's a good place to go to start off filing a complaint and they will respond within two weeks. Um, they also have some, uh, some templates for disputing credit uh, card, uh, you know, anything that's going to, be on your credit is fraudulent or incorrect. So they have good uh, letters for that. But in this case, we're talking about, we're talking about deferred interest. And this is something that really is prevalent for all these products. Like for example, the Amazon store card, they will give you the option if you're either getting 5% cash back for the purchase or putting it on a 0% financing plan, 0% interest, uh, financing plan so you can do it for six 24 you know uh, months six months 12 months 24 months and that's all fine and dandy while you're paying on time and paying automatically but if you don't pay that uh that whole balance off in the six months guess what you're getting hit with all the interest you would have been charged normally even if you know from month to month which is crazy now uh they're trying to get rid of this so guess what if they get rid of deferred interest then they're going to get rid of those promotional 0% interest periods too. I bet you they go hand in hand. Once you get rid of deferred interest, those 0% interests are going to go away as well. And I'm, I'm sure people are not going to like that. I've used those before. If you use 0% interest before, let me know in the comments because those do come in handy from time to time if you have like a super large purchase and you want to retain, you know, that money, uh, you know, in you want to retain that available credit or not the available limit, but you don't want to go ahead and pay that off in full immediately and you just want some extra time to get that paid off so next let's talk about the apple card right so the name of this stream this is about the apple card entices new card holders with a 10 percent boost to daily cash for a limited time apple card has plenty of perks already but for anyone who hasn't signed up for the credit card yet, Apple is looking to offer a hefty daily cash incentive to try co to convince them. Like most other credit cards, Apple Card offers a percentage back on purchases made and Apple calls this daily cash and the funds are automatically deposited into a couple of different locations depending on your setup. Apple is hosting a limited time promotion for the new car customers and what sees their daily cash boosted to 10% for the first six months and that's going to be up to $100. So that's why, um, you know, the name of the stream is 100 bucks. Now, I got a few issues. I have a few pros and a few cons for Apple. Um, and let's start with Let's start with the cons. I say let's start with the cons. Um, I don't like the fact that Apple does these limited time promotions. Like they're always hitting you. It's like it's like going to Taco Bell. Every time you go to Taco Bell, they they have a new. It's like they got a completely new menu. I can never. I never know what I'm gonna like. I don't go to Taco. By the way, I don't. I don't go to Taco Bell. But when I did years ago, okay, Cal years ago went to Taco Bell. I didn't know what I was getting. I didn't know what the menu was. And the same thing with Apple, I never know what the sign-up promotion is going to be. Unlike other cars that offer like the Chase Freedom Flex line or the Capital One Quicksilver car, you know those are going to give you $200 in cash back of a sign-up bonus. Like it's like clockwork. But with the Apple car, you don't know if you're getting 75 bucks, if you're getting nothing. Sometimes they give you nothing at all. 
you know there's no sign of bonus at all um sometimes and they're, it's like they're testing out different things for a few weeks or, or or a whole month and they'll just test it and pull it back test it and pull it back um you know i tend to not like the the boosted uh percentage because they're not giving it to you all up front there's a potential that you cannot earn the whole 100 dollars in intro bonus because if you don't spend enough on the car which they want spend a lot because that's how they make their money through the swipe fees and so if you don't spend a lot then you're not going to get the complete 100 dollars cash back if they if they provided you with a sign up bonus like like the capital one quicksilver card which you know you can spend like 500 or 700 bucks whatever it is at the time and you automatically get the 200 bucks back that's way easier to do you can do that in one purchase and or you can do it at least in one month so i don't like that fact about the apple card um and the sign up bonus i don't like this limited time but let me tell you what i do like about the apple card and it's it, it's a few things i like that the apple card is has been very accessible to people so even if you have like a 600 credit score you can get in the door and i feel like i feel like it's gotten too much uh descent too much negative attention because it doesn't have a traditional award system and it doesn't directly line up or stack up with these other cars that require a 700 credit score. I cannot be clear enough about that. You cannot directly compare an entry level card that requires people to have a 600 score to a more premium card that requires a 700 score, like the Chase cars. They're not comparable. They're apples, they're apples and oranges, right? So I like that about the Apple card. I do like the daily cash. So you earn that cash back when the transaction clears when the transaction the next day and it finally goes to pin from pending to posted that's when you get your cash back i love that so all throughout the month you're getting little sit percentage points little bits and uh, pieces of of those transactions in cash back and it automatically goes into the account you don't have to press a button to redeem it i do like that that's a next generation feature and i like that aspect of it Yeah, I think um, I, there's a good way to put it, uh, Matt. I just want to highlight that here. You said the whack-a-mole sign-up bonus model of the Apple Card and built is not ideal. You just, you're just trying to, uh, you're just trying to get to the sign-up bonus. You, like you never know where it's going to pop up at. Are you going to get some silly ten-dollar sign-up bonus when you, you know, invite, um, you know, when you invite a family member to Apple Family? Are you going to get a, you know, fifty-buck sign-up bonus when you spend? over hundred dollars at Nike who knows Apple who knows you know just just give us give us 20 bucks or something do just do just throw us a bone here Apple that's all you got to do that's all you got to do so um do you think go ahead do you think this is a decent sign up bonus if you think this is a decent sign up bonus I don't know what letter what, what letter is good for that I mean Put, put an A. You think this is a if you think this is a good sign up bonus, put an A in the comment section. If you think this is a bad sign up bonus, put an F in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about that. Oh, somebody said, uh, Jay, what's up, Jay? You said I got a $150 sign up bonus for the Apple Cart they're jipping y'all they are jipping y'all <laughs> when did they offer the 150 though i never i've never seen the 150 sign up bonus for the apple car that they probably offered it for one day that's probably what they did they said we're gonna just go ahead make this go live for one day 24 hour sign up bonus you catch it you catch it if you don't then you missed out now i do want to tell you that you can sign up for um promotionals uh i think there's if you go in the, within the apple wallet app you can go and you can click on maybe more the more menu somewhere and they'll offer you the ability to get um to get marketing emails you definitely want to have that checked off because sometimes they'll send you uh they'll send you targeted bonuses that you can sign up for and so you might be able to take advantage of definitely want to do that oh yeah we got a lot of f's in here we got a ton of f's in the comment section guys ton of f's here 
Uh, what's up, C Bill? You said, uh, do you need an Apple phone or an iPad to get the car? Uh, you, I mean, you can like I can get the car. I have I don't use any Apple products. So and um, but I could get the car. I have an, a, a, an Apple ID. As long as you have an Apple ID, you can get the car. But you really it doesn't make any sense because you're not going to be able to to use the Apple wallet app if you have an Android phone or something else. So it just doesn't make sense to sign up for the car if you don't have an iPhone. Yeah, so Jay was saying that it's it yeah, it was like that for a week. I knew it I knew it was a week, man. I knew it was some some short period. You know, they didn't they really didn't want anybody to know about that sign up bonus. They were like, I hope they got their fingers crossed. Like, I hope nobody uses this sign up bonus because we just don't want to spend the money. We're a trillion dollar company, two tri multi trillion dollar company, and we don't want to pay out any referrals. They have no referrals, but I, I don't think they have any referrals also. Come on, Apple, come on now. They're being too cheap being too cheap here and next uh personal financial management is the next must-have for mobile banking apps personal financial management tools built into mobile banking and credit card apps are rapidly becoming a table stakes item for financial institutions the implications are serious for a variety of reasons if the PFM functionality is well done. The apps could prove to be stickier in terms of customer retention, a key advantage. However, the flip side of that advantage is that many consumers are shopping around. People are splitting off part of their primary banking accounts to try out other financial providers. The incumbent providers run the risk that if a comp competitor's app is better, consumers could decide to consolidate more of their financial business at this new home. So I'm, I think they're talking more about like, uh, you know the some of these apps like rocket rocket money um i think dave ramsey always markets um every dollar some app like that what's the app that i use i use sofi actually but they have sofi relay which i, I if i can consolidate you know the apps that i'm using i'm gonna do that you know uh I, i'm definitely using relay more just trying to link all my accounts so that i can get a good picture uh in a nice graphic of where my money's being spent and how close I'm getting to each individual budget, that definitely comes in handy. But um, there's so many apps trying to get in the ring, get in the game. Let me know which app do you use to budget, uh, and do you use do you just use your banking app because they offer that, or do you use like uh, a credit card issuers app like Chase, or are you using one of these third party ones? Let me know in the comments. Yo, CJ, what's up, CJ? Another creator here. Welcome. You said, uh, <laughs> yes, let's get Cal an iPhone. iPhobe. I'm a, I'm an iPhobe. That's what I am. I'm an I, I, I of uh, iPhones. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. CJ, you funny. I need, Nino said, I, we need to convert cow to apple ecosystem get that iphone nah i'm good i'm good on that i'm good on that yo somebody please somebody in the comments yo ha get my back here yo, have my back so i know somebody out here has got an android phone yo put somebody's got to have my back here all right 60 percent of millennials are interested in bank-based buy now pay later so buy now pay later plans seem to be everywhere but the greenfield opportunity remains relatively untapped. A new study found that 50 million consumers use buy now pay later through 2022 and the appeal of paying by installments as relayed to us by more than 2200 consumers cuts across demographics and income levels. The impetus is there then for traditional financial institutions to make inroads into the space. Research showed that a significant percentage of consumers would access to BNPL plans offered by banks rather than fintechs as 70 percent of respondents 36 respondents who were not currently buy now pay later users said they would opt for one offer by a bank over a fintech listen i understand that i'm i'm i like here's the thing here's the thing i like competition and i like these fintechs i i I found that out about myself when I started using Simple Bank. I found that out about myself when I started using SoFi in the early days, like four years ago, before everybody knew about. Well, I, you know, it's so funny. Uh, I told uh, you know uh, a home uh, a a mortgage attorney. 
I think that's what they're called, about SoFi. And she was like, I, what is that? What is SoFi? And I was like, oh my, people still don't know what that is, but it really depends on your age group. But I was, I was a first adopter, early adopter of SoFi. I like the fintechs. I like what they, you know, their, their promise, what they're trying to do. They're trying to create, you know, be competitive. They offer better features oftentimes, higher uh, interest rates. I love that part. Now, the other, the other side of fintechs is that they're not really steady. So you definitely got to, you know, you, got, you definitely have to diversify. You can't put all your money into a fintech because they could really switch up hard on you. They could completely dissolve and go away. So you definitely want to be um, observant, or cognizant of that. But uh, it makes sense that, you know, people are going to, they're kind of staunchly ingrained and entrenched in their brick and mortar bank, their Bank of America's, their uh, Wells Fargo's, Chase's. People don't really want to move off of that. So the more that those banks can just like fully service them, they're willing to stick with them. And then guys, I want to show you something that I'm working on. I think that it's going to be pretty powerful. I, I just discovered kind of a new uh, strategy or hack, if you will, to completely pay for uh if you if you run a business and you're running payroll, you know that payroll costs, you know, it could cost anywhere from 50 bucks, $100. And depending on the size of your company, um, you could be paying hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. But if you have a one person company like I do, or if you have a small team that you're running payroll for, you could completely pay for that payroll service by doing by making just like one or two moves. And I just want to show you an overview. I'm creating a whole video on this. But there's one or two moves that you can make to make this happen. And I just want to take a look here. So, for example, I use ADP. I have a link down in the pinned comment, the pinned comment here for ADP. You get a 20% uh, lifetime discount if you run payroll using ADP. And this is what the interface looks like. So if you come to the search box and you go to... Uh, Actually, if you start, if you go to apps in the user interface from the main page, you can go to an app that you can integrate. It's called Zill Money. And Zill Money allows you to pay any vendor with a credit card. But what it also allows you to do is pay payroll with a credit card. So you can fully make your payroll payment or percentage of your payroll with a business credit card. And so what that allows you to do is use a credit card like the US bank, if I can load it here, the US bank triple cash rewards visa card. You earn $500 cash back when you spend like, I think it's like $3,000 within 150 days, let's say. So you can actually run payroll for $3,000 or five that whatever that threshold is with this business credit card earn the $500 cash back because it qualifies as a purchase. And then you can direct deposit it using ADP into a personal checking account like PSECU, which I have a link below to this too. If you direct deposit $200 for uh, three months straight, you're going to get access to the $300 sign up bonus with PSECU. So just in one swoop, in one, in in just, you know, two steps, you're taking a business credit card, qualifying for $500, and then you're taking a personal checking account with a great uh, credit union, by the way. They have really co cool uh, credit card products that have some really nice features. You're earning $300 on the other end. Combine that, you got 800 bucks, and that could either get close to or fully pay for payroll for the whole year. So it's just an easy way to completely eliminate that, uh, that fee, that expense from your, uh, from your business. So I want to know, what is everybody been um, getting approved for? What credit cards have you been getting approved for? Uh, what topics 
well, I guess what news story, just let me know in the comments what news story really jumped out at you this week. And did you get approved for any cars? Did you get a credit limit increase? I wanna congratulate you on that. All right, so I'm gonna go, uh, Mojo, I see your uh, comment there. Let me go up in the chat and see what the question is. Just give me a sec. Okay, so Mojo said, DCU is offering me a pre-approval pre offer for $10,000. Would you take the offer or would you submit for the max credit limit they offer, uh, which is $25,000 instead of taking the 10, the 10 K I feel 25 K app would need a proof of income and docs. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm surprised that they didn't, they didn't require docs, um, immediately off the bat. You know, I recently, uh, signed up for the, uh, PSCCU checking account, got approved for the checking account. And then I went in and applied for their founder's card. They immediately asked me for a driver's license, copy of um, my pay stubs, which is why you want to be running payroll, by the way, for your business, because that's how I prove my income through pay stubs, which I create by myself uh, through the business. And I had to submit that information, those documents. Um, they're, they're most definitely going to be requiring proof of income. Um, so I would say if you don't want to provide the proof of income, then stick with 10K. If, if you can provide it and it will be accurate, then go for 25K because they're all they're going to do is counter offer. That's what I've seen in every instance. They don't just flat out deny anybody. They'll just counter offer with something. Maybe they'll raise it by, you know, 5,000. Maybe they'll give you a $15,000 limit, something like that. All right, so we got... Uh, an increase here. Okay, Cal, I got an automatic credit limit increase of $500 on my Chase Freedom Unlimited after my first six months. So you went from 200 And then I applied for the Chase Freedom Flex last week and got approved for 1500 after reconsideration. Wow. Okay. Well, listen, um, congrats on getting through reconsideration because, you know, that doesn't work out a lot of the time. And um, so cool. Are those near, are those close to your average credit limits? Because um, I, when I read 500, I was like, whoa, that's kind of low. But as a percentage of your your starting credit limit, that's it's actually good, right? It's like a 25% boost, I think. I'm doing the math correct. Oh, man, thank you so much. Uh, Chaz Money Minutes showing some love. You said uh, three card approvals in three months. Whoa. You got the um, Hilton uh, Surpass, Amex Green. I heard that's nice. And Curve. Support your creators, guys. Yes, man. Support the creators for sure. The Amex Green, I didn't know that it was... I call it the baby gold because it's like it gives you... It's just like similar rewards but a little, a little less. And it's like a, what, a $95, $99 annual fee? Very cool. Um, I think Amex Green is better for people that, that don't travel as much. Because, um, you know, you don't want to pay a super high annual fee if you're just, you know, taking two flights domestically every year. Congrats on those three card approvals. Congrats on that. You went on a little application spree there, right? I talked about that in my um, most recent uh, uh, newsletter. Definitely just sign up for the newsletter. I have a link there in the description if you want to. But congrats on the new cards, Chad. And also the Curve card. You know, I was using the Curve card um i want to say almost a year ago when i first got it it was like i and i kind of let it i kind of put it to the side because i wasn't sure what was going on i felt like the company wasn't really giving any updates um they had they had some stuff going like they are they're from the uk and i saw the products that they had in the uk and the services weren't transferring over here so they had like a paid product that you could sign up for so i was worried that they would have they would get shut down or something so i want i want to check back in with curve and see what they're up to because i was super interested i think i used the curve car for 
you know, three months or something. And I, I, it was working like off and on. Like I was trying to connect my city custom cash cards to it to, to use for gas and grocery. And I was just trying to combine my cards and didn't really work. I, I wasn't getting the right merchant um, codes when I used it at a specific, uh, you know, uh, for, spe you know, specific category. So I kind of put it to the side, but I have to revisit it. All right, we got somebody a year into the credit card game. Now I'm gonna ask you real quick, and it, you can just tell me if, if, if you want to. You said, uh, Keenan said, I'm almost a year into the credit card game now, and that was my fourth card, whatever card, I, I didn't look into the chat. So what drew you into the credit card game? Since you're so close to the beginning, what drew you into credit cards? What got you interested? I'm really curious about this because I, I really can't, remember the moment i feel like i just eased into it i saw some videos on ben hedges at sebi i started like I, I started real casual with the uber card and i'm not sure that moment when the light bulb switched okay I, I can't i think it was during the sign up bonus phase when i was like oh that's like a nice couple hundred dollar sign up bonus to collect let me know what did it for you keenan All right, Chilzy, what's up, Chilzy? He, Chilzy, you're a regular here. Welcome. He said, I got a 16,000. 16, I was about to say 1,600. Don't let me disrespect you like that, okay? I got a $16,500 credit limit from Navy Federal. Listen, Navy Federal, what do they call Navy Federal? You go ahead and say it. House of High Limits. They're going to they're gonna raise you up high. They're going to give you, uh, you know, they're going to really give you what you deserve. Congrats on that. That's a really nice limit. Nino, you said uh, Chase Ink cards are in F. Davis's future. Listen, I want them to be in my future. Like I'm trying to get approved for an, an Ink Unlimited or something. Chase, uh, Chase is just not friendly to people that apply for as many cards as I do. It's just, it's really unfortunate. Chase, I can't. Uh, the, only, the only Chase card I have to my name is the Chase Freedom Unlimited. And what you know, I use it for, I actually use that card for DoorDash today. Got some really good Dominican food. Now, that Chase card, really good for DoorDash because um, you, you avoid the fees. But um, yeah, Chase, man, come on. Open the door, like crack open the door a little bit. Let us in a little bit with you guys. All right, Keenan's got a story for us. This is story time. Keenan, so you said, I got started when my uncle was explaining to me that I'll need good credit for everything. Knowing that I needed to get my own car soon, I did as much research as I could and I learned a lot. Okay, so you started down learning to build your credit path and then I'm, I'm guessing you ended up really enjoying the game, the strategy, the tactics of, you know, sign up bonuses credit limit increases, um, you know, strategizing, you know, s synergizing two cars together, creating a lineup that would work for your spending habits to get you earn you money. Pretty much I call it, it's like passive income. Like, you know, there's really no such thing as passive income. All income requires some level of work. But to me, this is like the closest thing, because if you're going to do if you're going to walk, you know, somewhere, it's like getting money for doing an action that you already were going to do that's passive i was already going to pay for that purchase you know i went to get my my car a tune-up today i went to get an oil change i used a card to do that you know i could have used cash but i didn't i used a credit card and i got points for it you know so it's nice to nice to have that
All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up early tonight. Get for got some more videos to edit. And I want to thank you for hanging out with me uh, every Sunday. You're going to see me sure that you're going to I'm I'm almost sure that you're going to see me next Sunday. Uh, I'll let you know in advance if I take that week off. But every Sunday, 7 p.m., same place. Everybody have a good night and I'll see you next time.